Hi guys, um, this video I'm recording for the Spinal Injuries Association. Um, they booked me to go and do a talk for them tonight at their Cornflower Ball um, at the Principal Hotel in Manchester. Unfortunately, due to the coronavirus, it's had to be cancelled, understandably. Um, so many sort of vulnerable people and their carers and, and things in one room wouldn't have really been ideal. So they've asked me just to record sort of a quite a quick video. Um, my name's Ben Wimbush, I'm a tetraplegic. I've got an incomplete spinal cord injury, um, as in 2011, just after David Hay versus um, Klitschko, a boxing match I was watching at my father-in-law's house. I unfortunately made the decision to get onto his um, trampoline in the back garden, did two somersaults. Um, the first one was good, straight onto my feet. The second one, I went off a shoulder and back up onto my feet. And then unfortunately, my friend said to me, do another one, and I did. And none of us are really sure exactly what happened next, other than I landed very strangely in the middle of the trampoline um, with my neck at an awful angle and ended up shattering C3, which is the third bone down from the base of my skull. Um, as a result of that, I've got an incomplete spinal cord injury. So this happened at about 10 to 11 at night. I was taken to the Manchester Royal Infirmary. From there, I was taken to the Salford Royal, AKA Hope Hospital in Manchester, or Salford, if anyone knows the area. Um, and I stayed in intensive care there for three weeks. Now, for a week of that, I was sedated. So I would say it wasn't as bad as it sounds. Um, I had to have two operations, one at the front of my neck here, the second one at the back, um, I would say it was the mental side of things at that stage that were more difficult to cope with. Um, and in all honesty, that's where straight away the Spinal Injuries Association came in. Um, they had a nice lad who came to my bedside, I must have been injured about 10 days, and said to me quite simply, you'll feel at the moment like you're ahead in the bed. And at the time, I didn't quite take on board what he meant, but looking back, he was exactly right and he gave me the chance to ask any questions that we wanted. I had my then father-in-law with me at the time. Um, I asked some pretty personal questions, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I asked him if he was working or if he had worked, and he had, he worked at the BBC. I remember asking him sexually if, if that was still possible, um, and to my relief, I was told that it, that it possibly was. Um, and it just set me in really good stead then um, to, to just try and be as positive as I could every single day, Spe specifically when I was in intensive care, because the last two weeks I wasn't sedated. So in intensive care, it's not really um, the other patients being ill that's so terrible to watch. It's the families reacting to things like car accidents coming in and stuff like that. So that was quite difficult. Um, and then I was incredibly lucky. Um, a lady who was due to go up to Southport Spinal Unit, unfortunately, wasn't quite ready. So a consultant came in to see her, and as an afterthought, put his head around my door, um, just to see um, how I was, who I was, and just to tell me about Southport Spinal Unit. Now, I treated it a bit like a job interview, I'll be honest. So, um, at the time I was working for a bank, um, they were still paying me, um, I was married at that stage, so I felt as if I was sort of duty bound really to try and get as fit as I could, as healthy as I could. I knew getting to, to Southport was something that I might have to wait for. Um, and I can just remember thinking, this is like a job interview, I've just got to make it count. Well, unbelievably, um, that happened I think on the Thursday, and uh, we got a phone call in intensive care to the phone next to the bed, and a staff nurse, um, I remember saying, yeah, I'm sure we can arrange transport. And to his amazement and my amazement, I was told that at the end of that week, beginning of the next week, I'd be transferred straight to, um, to Southport. Now, at the time, I had a tracking. Um, what happened was a very experienced member of staff at intensive care worked out that um, the whole or the, the tracking site itself was too big really for what Southport would want. Normally Southport would have um, weaned me off the ventilator when I got there. But she watched me breathing. She's obviously very experienced. She was just about to go and be a sister. 
um, and this was her last four shifts um, at Salford Royal. And she basically said on a, on a, a ward round that she suspected that if we took the tracking out, um, I'd be able to breathe unaided. Now, I didn't know if that was true or not. I don't think the other doctors did, but they obviously listened to her experience and they asked me what I thought I should do next or they should do next. And I just said, I, I agree with, with the, the nurse. So they asked who I wanted to take it out. And um, they offered doctors or I just said, I'd like the nurse to do it. So five minutes later, they pulled out my trackie and I can only describe it as a feeling of sort of swimming underwater and just like breaking through the surface, taking a huge, great big, um, big lung full of air. Really emotional when it happened. Um, very lucky really that I had that lady and obviously very lucky that Southport Spinal Unit were up for, um, for, were up for um, taking me so early. Now, I should add at this stage that my grab my trackie and I can only describe it as a feeling of sort of swimming underwater and just like breaking through the surface, taking a huge, great big, um, big lung full of air. Really emotional when it happened. Um, very lucky really that I had that lady and obviously very lucky that Southport Spinal Unit were up for, um, for, were up for um, taking me so early. Now, I should add at this stage that my grandfather has got or did have a spinal cord injury. I never met him. He was injured in 1945. He was a vicar and at the time he fell out of um, an apple tree and broke his back on a submerged route. So he's, um, he was um, a paraplegic. I'm what's referred to in England as a tetraplegic or quadriplegic worldwide. So I suppose you could say at least I'm beating the curve. Um, <laughs> It's certainly something that's affected our family greatly um, and in reality it does ripple on and cause ripples um, that seem to go on forever. I mean, for example, I was injured when I had um, the accident. Um, sorry, I was um, married when I had the accident. Um, unfortunately, my partner and my relationship didn't survive. So she was brilliant and supported me all the way through rehab. But unfortunately, once I came home, um, felt that it was not something that she could carry on doing. Um, I'm very, very relieved that's the case um, because it's been better for me in the long run and, and obviously better for her. It's water under the bridge as far as I'm concerned. So I hold no, no grudges, but obviously when you get married, you do intend for that to be forever. And for it to be stopped by something that you feel is outside of your control is really, really difficult to um, to come to terms with really ultimately. Now, the way I coped with it and the way I have coped and I do cope regularly now is that I try and look at, and I did my rehab as something that was almost um, like such a big target, you had to break it down into like bite-sized chunks. Now I used to be a salesperson, I've really done sales all my life. If you looked at your yearly sales target right at the beginning of the year, it was pretty daunting. So what you did is you broke it down into months and then down into weeks. I mean, look, there's some people can break it down into days and hours and all sorts, but I never went that far. I wanted something that just kept me focused. And I remember reading an article that said um, that 20 minutes or so's exercise as a minimum on average a day, and the same relaxing can actually go on to help um, us all to maintain our physical health and our mental health. So I thought, right, well, how am I going to get this sort of message out there? So I came up with the idea of using a hashtag. So it's hashtag 20 is plenty. And I started posting it online, really thinking it was just for me. Um, and gradually over the last, because I set it up in, like, towards the end of 2015, 16, gradually it picked up pace. It's gone through peaks and troughs for times when more people have joined in and there've been times when, when less have, but it's something that I've always stuck to. And what that meant is that in reality, um, I started to share the way that I do mine. Um, I've got um, like a weight frame I can use now. Um, I've also got a, um, an FES bike and I'm able to use that to give myself um, a proper cardiac, um, sort of like a cardio workout. That's made by a company called Restrictive Therapies. Um, and I was very lucky because that was funded by Manchester Continuing Health 
um, about five years ago. As in reality, if we can, as tetraplegics, manage to stay healthy and active, then we'd keep out of hospital. And in reality, to stay one night in hospital, I was told, as a ballpark figure, 1,500 pounds a night without any drugs. So you can imagine, if you're able to put some equipment in place, another thing I've got is a standing frame, um, that just helps to, to make sure we stay as fit as possible, and things like bone density and osteoporosis later in life, that's helped by standing. Um, and the FES bike, just the feeling of getting your heart beating. Um, it's really um, a bit like a slender time machine, as in um, it uses electricity to fire up your muscles, um, and then that simulates you riding a bike. Um, if you have a look on my social media, which is Ben Wimbush School, you can see examples of me using all of this. And I would be grateful if people would um, take the time to obviously to, to follow me and follow my journey. Um, as far as saying anything else to you today, I probably would have gone into a, a bit more detail about some of this stuff if I'd actually been at the ball. I'm one of those people that I don't really write um, a full script. I sort of try and speak from the heart. What I would say is that they were hoping that my speech tonight would inspire people in the room um, to basically donate money. It's as simple as that. Probably my best example um, of the SIA, other than Jamie, who I mentioned at the beginning, was um, a lady called Deborah, Deborah Cornwall, who used to come into Southport Spinal Unit and give us peer support. Now, after I'd finished at Southport, luckily I'd had the full benefit of this. She used to come in with a with a little dog, um, and she was using him as a service dog or an assistance dog. Um, I now own a dog called Rollo. He's nearly two. He's a chocolate lab. Um, I'm in training, or we're both in training, um, to turn him into my assistance dog. Um, and I would have never done that if it wasn't for Deborah. Now, unfortunately. At some point, the SIA didn't have enough funds in place and they had to make some incredibly difficult decisions and cut back on some of the services that they were able to provide. Well, one of those things was Deborah. So, all I'd say is please, put your hand in your pocket. People like that volunteering and explaining their journey don't come across or don't come along all the time. I sound like I'm getting really upset now. I am frustrated that I've not been able to come and speak to everybody tonight and equally, you know, I just really do hope people understand that people like me, we can't live our life if it isn't for charities and if it isn't for carers going the extra mile for us. So I'd just like to say thanks very much to the SIA for giving me the chance to speak. Um, what I will do is send all of this over to them now and they'll, they'll edit it up and they'll put it out as they see fit. But I really do feel humbled that I was asked to speak to everybody and uh, thanks a lot for your time. Um, like I say, come and find me on social media. Um, my name is Ben Wimbush and my social media page is Scored or S Cord. Um, and I'm on Twitter and I'm on Facebook and I'm on Instagram. So thanks very much, take care, all the best. Bye-bye.